It is my honor to be with you today. I'm here to bring you a gift, a new definition. Now, don't jump out of your seats in excitement, I know. A new definition of a word that we use here at the university all the time, and that word is research. But let me first ask you, by show of hands, how many of you identify as a researcher? That's quite a few, and considering we're at a U15 university, that's more than half the crowd. How many of you would like to become a researcher someday? Fantastic. Uh, I'm actually in both camps, same as some of you. I have d conducted research in the past, but I always look forward to my next research project. In my job in the Office of the Vice President Research here at the University of Saskatchewan, I work with students who want to become researchers. And so my office constantly thinks about the question, who can be a researcher? Now, frankly, research might have a bit of a branding problem at the moment. Have you noticed that at some universities, the word research has gained a couple of add-on words, like cabooses. We now say research, scholarly, and artistic work. And other universities might say research, scholarly, and creative activity. And these additions are, are great. They're perfectly fine. But it's suggestive that the word research is perhaps not as encompassing or as welcoming as it should be. Yet the word research is the shorthand that we all use when we talk about a university's mission of discovery. As I work with students who want to become researchers, my office quickly realized that this concept of research that students have and what many of us have is key to understanding who can do it. So when research is understood as something that's very elite and exclusive, that, that might sound good from a university's perspective. It sounds like high quality. It sounds like excellence in peer review. But in practice, the words elite and exclusive, they just exclude those who aren't considered elite. And I'm puzzled by this attitude, particularly when we do things at the university, such as give research awards to students who have the highest marks. Studies from universities all over the world have shown again and again that the qualities that we use to define elite, such as high marks, often have very little nothing or even an inverse relationship to the innovation that we need to conduct research. So to counteract this problem of, of research, this elitism and exclusion, I'm interested in bringing research into a new focus, expanding our concept of what it is and our understanding so that a broader range of people will feel welcome and supported to engage with it. Which brings me to your gift this new definition. And it's actually not new. I'm a historian, and so like a good historian, I went back to the origins of the word research. It's from Old French. Research is an action word, a verb. It's like build, create, study, explore, think. Actually, it's two action words, and they're smashed together so hard, it's really difficult to pull them apart. In the original, research meant go seek. And that first word is go. So start where you are and go somewhere else. Think of it as a journey, if you like, with energy and drive and discovery and purpose and enthusiasm and unexpected paths. And like any journey, it can start at any time, whether you're ready or not. That always makes me think of Bilbo Baggins the Hobbit, going off on his adventure without his handkerchief. He wasn't ready, he hadn't properly packed, and he certainly hadn't written a paper about mountains or dragons or spiders or goblins or magic rings. He just bolted straight off into his adventure. That's the energy of go. The second intertwined word is seek, to look to actively seek in a sustained and ever-present way. Now, you may not necessarily know what you're looking for. You're seeking. And what you're seeking might actually change as you go along. As you seek, you might find crossroads and new paths, dead ends, accidents, problems, setbacks, wrong directions, and friends, and wonder, and change. And you keep going, 
because still you seek. Now, there is one important distinction. This definition of research, go seek, is not go find. The action verb is not about finding. Over the past couple of pandemic years, we've all seen social media posts, and what do they scream? I did my research. And what that means is the person found something that supported what they already wanted to believe. They weren't willing to be wrong. They weren't challenging themselves. They weren't willing to engage with ideas or arguments or facts that ran counter to their belief. They were done. They found their answer. And that's not research. A researcher must be willing to go seek, be willing to be wrong, actively look to see if they are wrong, to learn, to grow, and continue. Research is an action word, not an end point. That's the difference. Now, why does this matter? Why, why do I want to gift you with this idea? To reclaim this old and now new to you, perhaps, de definition of the word research as go seek. What do I think it will do? I think it will do three things. First, this definition reminds us that discovery can happen at any moment in the journey. When I was in my, a very young scholar, I was invited to um, contribute to an international encyclopedia. I was so excited. So I wrote it up and I polished it and good practice, I sent it to colleagues to ask for their feedback. The most senior colleague in my field read it and the reply was, it's not how I would have written it. And I had the exact same reaction. I was, I was actually quite horrified. I almost dropped the whole thing and scrapped it and started again. But then I went back and I reread what he had to say. And I kept going a little further. What he actually said was, it's not how I would have written it. And I learned some things. That was the important part. And I learned some things. What I realized is a good lesson for all of us. You don't have to be a senior scholar to have an opinion or an idea or a discovery that has value. Anyone who goes, seeks, can add to and even change the thoughts of those around you. Change a whole discipline, even when you are just starting out. The second great thing that I hope will happen if we reclaim this original definition of research as go seek is that we'll learn to remember and to celebrate that at its core, research is an intensely and fundamentally individual and personal pursuit. When I went back to university, I was a young mom to become a professional historian. I had classes with other students who were also working to become professional historians. And we read the same readings, books, articles. And there I would be at home reading these, these readings, and I would have these creative ideas and connections and stories that were sparking inside my mind, and new understandings. And I would bring all of these things to class, and we would come together and we'd talk about these readings, and week after week after week, I was gobsmacked. It was like we were all reading something completely different. It was really amazing. It was very clear that everything that we were as people, what interested us as individuals changed how we responded to what we were doing. No one else thinks quite like you do. And we need to celebrate that. Everyone has something to contribute. The originality of thought that comes from who we are as people is what makes our contributions so valuable, and it has nothing to do with Marx. There was something more happening in that classroom, and I'll return to it again in a moment. But I want to pause here again and make a small point. When we learn to celebrate that each of us has intrinsic value based on who we are as people and the unique way that each of us think, we might help to address a major problem that we have in the university, and that's imposter syndrome. I know that many of you, perhaps like me, have sometimes felt it, that we don't know enough, that there has to be some magical tipping point, that someone will come along and say that we don't belong or tell you that you don't fit. 
Students report feeling this imposter syndrome regularly. And what it is, it's the separation between who we are as people and this lofty explanation of research as something elite and exclusive. Imposter syndrome lives in this gap. Remove that gap, reclaim research as a verb, as an action word, and I hope that imposter syndrome will start to recede. I want to return to that classroom with my colleagues. There we all were, imagine us, sharing our thoughts. The third thing that I believe will happen when we gift ourselves with this reclaimed definition of research as go seek is that we will expand our community of research practitioners, expand it across disciplines and beyond the silos of the academy. We need to welcome all of those who go seek, wherever and however they are, community-based, university-based, in business, doesn't matter. It's about listening and talking on an equal level. That's what was happening in the classroom. We were speaking, but we were also all listening, and we were all equal. My office runs a number of symposiums for students, both on and off campus. We ask students to explain their research, their go seek in plain language. And we invite people from across the campus and beyond to come to these sessions, to engage, because we know that when we bring people together with curiosity to listen to each other, we will break those boundaries between disciplines and between the academy and beyond. When we do that, when we share our journeys of discovery, our go seek, we will energize, we will engage, we will receive feedback, give feedback, and share ideas. Communication, like community, is not one way. It's equal. Communication grows community. And when more people feel part of that community, engaged, more people will engage in research. I'll end with this, back to your gift. Next time you hear the word research, please stop and think, ah yes, this is a verb, this is an action word. It means go seek. When we do that, when more people understand themselves to be welcome as researchers, because they're richly unique individuals, they have their own ideas, their own knowledge, their own practices, and no matter where they are, if they're just starting out, if they're developing or a senior, that they're valued on this journey to go seek. Then and only then will we grow the culture and the number of practitioners who research. And those of you who raised your hand and said that you would like to be identified as a researcher someday, clearly you wish to go seek. And that makes you a researcher now. Thank you.